Okay, because I like making small books and you know you need cardboard, this is how I store my cardboard for making books. It's a Linus uh, refrigerator tub. You can get, uh, or, well, maybe this one is not a Linus. Might be a Linus knockoff, I don't know. Anyway, you can find these at Tuesday morning. You can find these all kinds of places. And let me preface this by saying, these are not the cheapest containers to store stuff I've ever used. You could probably get things that are colored and wonderful at Dollar Tree for way less money than what I spent on these, but I have used these over and over and over and over. I will get rid of other plastic containers, but these bad boys, they stay because they were not cheap, and I'll be darned if I'm getting rid of these things. All right, so what I do is I store my uh, cardboard in here for making books, and when I do that, if I have... I go for, try to make it from the shortest to the tallest. There's a Cheerios box in the back. So what I do is, I know I'm going to make books out of these. When my husband gives me, he loves drinking Crystal Light. And, um, let me put this out of the way. He likes drinking Crystal Light and makes himself that kind of stuff in a pitcher and leaves it in the fridge. So he always hands me these colored boxes and I cut the flaps off and then I cut them open. So they're ready to go when I want to make a book. But because I discovered I have so many of them and I really like them to be organized, I put them all together. I clip them together. And then I store them in the box according to the height. And let's see. Safeguard soap boxes because we use Safeguard soap. There's three of those. And I just used a paper clip on those. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Oh, <laughs> in the fall, we eat a lot of corn muffins for like Thanksgiving or, you know, any kind of holiday like that or, or eat a corn muffin with chili because I live in the South and I save the corn muffin boxes. And again, I just paper clipped them together so that I can always find because if I screw up one and I'm like, uh oh, I cut it too short. Ta-da! Got a backup. And really, I've already used the product out it. Uh, out of it so it's really not that big a video if I screw it up if I make a miscut somewhere I'll just cut the other stuff off and now it's called a tag you know so that's the one thing about crafters we try to recycle a lot of stuff that we have and use it over and over as many ways as we can this one required a larger clip because these are candy boxes Carlet Cage Fish got me saving these silly things these dollar candy boxes that you can get at at uh, Dollar Tree or Dollar Stores. And they're the perfect size for a small book. And that's one of my most favorite things to do. Although I most of this candy I do not like. So I put them all in Ziploc bags and go, here hubs, <laughs> you eat these because I'm not eating them. So there's my, um, there's my candy box storage. And like I said, I keep like things together, so if I mess up one, there's always a backup. Most stuff I have more than one of. As you can see, we like Kraft macaroni and cheese. <laughs> um, as much as I'd like to bake from scratch, I don't always bake cakes from scratch. There's cake boxes. Oh, look, there's Samoan Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> Alrighty, so that's how I store that kind of stuff. And like I said, I go from shortest... See how I can do this. Shortest to tallest. I saved, um, I used the Prima, uh, Prima watercolors, you know, these things that you guys saw in a past video. I, and I saved the boxes that I got them in because I'm thinking that someday this little box is going to come in handy where I can make um, some kind of a book out of it. Because I like the, the front for a cover. You know, because it's got a lot of color in it, and they're nice. I like them. So I saved all those. Um, I even saved my ATG gun tape things because, and I cut it backwards, <laughs> but it's going to be covered up with paper or paint anyway. So this makes the perfect 3x3 three three inch paper notebook. It's fine small, so you can get like maybe two or three signatures in there if you don't cram too much stuff in there. And it's the perfect size. So if you're a mini bookmaker, these are the kinds of things that you should be saving. This is from my traveler sketchbook. This was around the sketchbook. And so I saved it. 
because I, and I will not cover this up because I really love the cover on this. Perfect size for a mini book of some sort. There you go. You got the inside of a, you, you've got yourself a book cover. If you don't want to cover it up, you, you don't have to if you want to. There you go. Doesn't matter. But I saved it. And in order to save space, I unfold this stuff so that it is unfolded. And that's why I cut all the flaps and stuff off because it gives me more room. There are times where I wished I had not cut the flaps off of stuff. But for the most part, I cut the flaps off and it works out just fine. Oh, look, I got a lot. My husband loves Zatarans. So I got a lot of Zatarans here. I guess I need to clump those guys together too because I've got three or four of them. Anyway, so this is the kind of stuff that I store. And it's gotten to the point now where the box is full. So I told my husband this morning, no more collecting boxes. I need to use up what I have in here because it's just too much now. I, I need to cut myself off. So I'm not collecting any more little boxes for a while till I use up some of these. So that is how I store those. Okay, so one more thing where I store that I followed uh, Jennifer McGuire's idea is how to store my stamp sets. She does a lot of hers according to the manufacturers because she works for um, different design companies for stamps and things like that. I don't! So I store them according to the subject matter. This again, this is really hard to show and you are as far out as I can get you. Um, again, this is one of those plastic refrigerator tubs. I did pay, I did get this off of Amazon because I wanted the one that was split in half. Um, so I could do two rows this thing weighs a ton. Two rows of stamps, as you can see. So what she did was she bought cheap folders and then cut them according to the size that she needed and rounded off the corners and then put labels on them and stuck them in front of the stamp sets. I don't need to know who the manufacturer of the stamp set is, so I bought the plastic pockets. I think I got some of these from Am most of these from Amazon because they have a ton of variety on there and I live out in the country and you know it's an hour's drive to the nearest large craft store and it's much cheaper with gas going up that I just let Amazon deliver it because I have Amazon Prime. Um, so I keep my stamp sets in here and the ones where the stamp set is too tall to go in here and I can cut it off I will cut off the stamp set with the plastic and then I took my ATG gun and ran it on the cardstock here and then put the little plastic piece that the stamp is on when I cut it apart on the back. And then I just put the stamp on the other side. Some of the stamp sets have the black on them underneath so that you can see what the stamp is, but they don't always. So I would take the stamp set and I would stamp it on the card so I could see what was in the stamp set. I didn't do that for all of them like these. You don't need to do that. Oops, I got some sets of backwards. Yeah, this one you don't need to because they're on the front like that. And I don't need to put baby stuff on there because it says baby on there. And then that's it. I took really inexpensive cardstock and cut cardstock to the size of the envelopes so that I could do this. It was a labor of love to organize all my stamp sets. I don't have a lot of stamps. I say that as you see like 10,000 here, but I don't, I stopped more or less collecting stamp sets because honestly, since I stopped making cards or don't make them very often, I don't really use a lot of these. And one day I'm going to purge them when I grow up, get the courage up. <laughs> I'm going to purge some of these out. So I'm going to tell you some of the subjects that I go. I just did them by subject that worked for me. Now I'm sure you guys will all do something different. I did babies, birthday, butterflies, bees. And the ones that had, you know, other subjects on them, I said butterflies, bees, bugs, and fish. Because I didn't have that many Coffee and tea has its own category because I did pocket letter swaps and started collecting the stamps to do the um, coffee and tea stuff. And so I had enough to do a huge category. This one, I mean, come on, this one's Christmas. This one's a biggie. Design elements. That's things that didn't really fit into other categories. I didn't know what to do with this stuff. No, I did the back side of it also. I didn't know what to do with this stuff. So I kind of put it like gears. What do you, where do you put gears? 
it's not Christmas, it's not bugs, you know. So I just put it in there. You could do a Tim Holtz category if that's what you wanted. But I didn't really want to. Um, vineyard stuff, thanks a bunch. You know, that kind of thing. Um, so I put them in a category of their own. Then I have flowers, which is a large section. Holidays, home and home decor. And when I'm saying home and home decor, I actually really mean <laughs> there's a couch. A wicker couch. Um, so there's that. Then I have one called leaves because I collect a lot of trees and leaf stuff. And there are those. Letters. You know, for your alphabets. Uh, needle arts. I used to do a, a, a lot of... I have a friend who sews and whenever I do stuff for her, I try to put sewing items, stamp her stuff with sewing stuff. So I have some stamp sets that are dedicated to sewing and knitting, needle art type stuff, knitting, crochet, whatever. Then I have planner tag section. I don't know why, because I don't do planners. But I like the stamps that they use, that, that they create. They're great in mixed media, so, you know, what the hey. This one's got a giant rib uh, bow on it for Christmas. So that kind of stuff. Here are, oh, let me move this behemoth out of the way. I have this one and a skinny one that only does a single row of stamps. And then I have another one that's smaller and I'll show you that one. So here are the um, the storage, they call it stamp and die storage pack, pocket of 25, five and five eighths by seven and three eighths. These, are these them? No, these are bigger. You can see the difference in size. These are larger. I think that's this size right here. So when I buy the pockets, I go ahead and cut up the white cardstock and put them in the pockets. So in case one of these rips or something, I have the backup. So there's those. And I think I did get these off of Amazon. See, I put, I don't have it in there. I went ahead and did some cardstock in here. And when I run out of white, since I have a bunch of gray cardstock and I have no idea why, I will use gray and put it in here because I don't want to buy any more cardstock to fill up these things. I'm just going to use what I have. So there's the two sizes. You have the large and then you have the smaller size. Let me do it this way. There you go. So there's the, whoo, here's the smaller size with the flap down and there's the larger size and there's the flap down anyway. So those are two sizes. All you have to do is go look on Amazon. There is a ton on there, but just be sure that you get the good quality stuff because I don't know about you guys, but my stamp stuff takes a beating because I take it in and out, in and out. All right, let me get the smaller tub and show you the smallest one of the three that I have. Okay, so this is smaller size tub, and I think I got this from Tuesday morning for five or six dollars. So there it is sideways. You can't, I can't flip the other ones over because they're just too big. So this is a smaller size one. This one is, where's that ruler? Where is the room? Here we go. This is about 11 inches long and five and a quarter, five and a half inches across. So this one holds my little tiny stamps. I like going to Hobby Lobby and buying the little bitty stamps. So these are ones where, let's a little tiny bee. This is a mushroom stamp. I did leave these things in their original packages because it was much easier to do it this way than it was to do a whole nother size tub, Lexan tub, to do, um, I don't want to put them in those big, huge pocket things. And I'm sure they make small ones, but I'm not going to spend the money on them. So these are all the small stamps that I've got. And I don't classify them any specific way in this small holder other than, look, they're the same height. Oh, they can go together. <laughs> a lot of these came from Hobby Lobby and they were, you know, I got them when they were 40 and 50% off. Not that I use any of them, but just saying I got them on sale. <laughs> all right, so I have all those in there. And I, now I did put these, the back section in, stamp, in the holders and these are, CD size holders that they sell on Amazon. And the reason I have these like this is because I made a Santa Claus, no, Santa Claus, what am I thinking? I made a snowman junk journal for my sister-in-law for Christmas one year. And I ended up collecting all these snowmen for her to do the, the stamping and stuff in there. 
and they fit perfectly in this CD size um, pocket. So I kept, so all my snowmen that I bought for her are in this section right here, and there's a ton of them. I, you know, I went a little bit nuts. So I collected, I like this particular designer's snowmen, and so I, um, I collected a lot of those. So this back section, they're in alphabetical order. All my stuff's in alphabetical order, except for the front section, which is not like that. Um, so I have Christmas trees, you know, the Tim Holtz stuff, giant fish. These little flower stamp things are so cool. I got these at Tuesday morning, and they come with a generous amount of stamps in them. But they come with the plastic on them that show you what's underneath it. It's colored. So that works out great. I don't have to put cardstock in here or anything because these come and they're already wonderful the way they are. And then there's a, another stamp on the back side because I didn't want to use the big ones on this. So I have one, two, two of those. Then I have my joggle stamps in here. When they have them on sale, I buy the joggle stamps because I like the stuff that's ATC size so I can stamp them and file them away and save them for a later date. <laughs> it's crazy, I know. So stuff like this that's squarish, I put in here. So this is my miniature stamp holder. I have wooden blocks that are stored differently and I'm not gonna show those because they're on the other side of the room and I'm not gonna dig them out. But basically, this is how I store my stuff. So I think that's it. Um, most everything is either in some kind of a fish tackle box that's, you know, the plain, small plastic containers. I use a lot of these clear plastic containers because they're durable and I can use them if I get tired of using it in here or want to incorporate these into something else. This is left over. I store the empty ones in the closet and when I need a container, I go right to the closet to see if I can find the perfect container because I don't need to spend any more money on containers. Well... Not this week. <laughs> All right, guys. See you later. Bye.